My name is Emily Burns and this is my semester project about unknown soil bacteria for Biology 3015. For this project, the main objective is to isolate and identify pesticide degrading bacteria from a soil sample. We're collecting these on the behalf of the ERSM. The location where my soil sample was collected was on the coordinates 40.65 latitude, negative 111.87 longitude. This is in the city of Murray, Utah. The collection date was on December 30th, 2019, and as you can see with the pinpoint on the left, the soil location was of a residential lawn soil. This is definitely an urban location with lots of development over the years. This location was picked because seasonal pesticides have been used on this lawn for over five years consistently. The pesticide is known as Ace Weed and Feed, um, and the uh, pesticide analysis is printed on the label. Now it is likely to find pesticide degrading bacteria in this location because of the continual use of this pesticide and the bacteria that live here have likely adapted to it and could possibly degrade it themselves. So why do we care about pesticide degrading bacteria? If we can identify the enzymes pesticide degrading bacteria have and use to degrade their pesticides, we could use this to protect people who are consistently exposed to the toxic agent themselves. For example, we have farmers who are consistently exposed as well as soldiers in wartime are also exposed and it can be really harmful. The methods for this project consist of six basic steps. We have the collection, revitalization, enrichment, outgrowth, isolation, and then finally the characterization and identification. This is the last step is where we take each specific test to start and try and determine um, the genus based on uh, a dichotomous key and these specific tests. So we have the oxygen requirements, the negative staining, the gram staining, catalase test, the oxidase test, the motility test, and the urease test. So here I'm just going to go quickly through the parts of my specific collection going through each method. So for the collection, here's just the baggie of the specific soil sample itself. Then for revitalization, it's basically just taking a small amount of my soil sample and putting it in a carbon-free selective media with proxin. This is abbreviated CSMPX. For the enrichment, it's just a continual change of CSM PX into new tubes with um, new bacterial, uh, the bacterial soil. For the outgrowth, it is just an enriched soil culture transfer to the sterile LB medium, and then finally grown at 27 degrees Celsius in a dark shaking incubator. For the left, you can see the newly inoculated uh, LB medium with the soil culture, and then on the right is just the culture after a week of growth, so the cloudiness indicates the growth. Now for the isolation, we just took the broth of growth and streaked it for isolation uh, for a specific colony that we can use to do the tests on. The characterization of a colony A took a series of different steps, as I stated before, um, with different tests to determine each specific characteristic of the colony A. So for the oxygen requirements, colony A found that it was facultative anaerobe. The negative staining found that the shape was vibrio, the size was 1.36 micrometers, and the grouping was single. single. The gram staining, we found that it was gram negative, the size was 1.25 micrometers, and then the capsule was very likely to be present as well because of the size difference between the negative staining and the gram staining. The oxidase cysts, we found that it was oxidase positive. For the catalase test, we found that it was catalase positive. For the urease test, we found it was urease positive. For the hanging motility test, I found that it was non-motile. After the specific characterization tests were complete, I was able to somewhat identify the genus of my unknown colony. So I'll walk you through this process based on the test results and the dichotomous key. So they were straight cells with their rods. They were gram-negative. They were facultatively, facultatively anaerobic. They were vibrioid. And from this point, we just took the urease test, and the one that was positive was the one that was likely the genus. That was the most closely related. Now, because the characterization techniques can be done incorrectly, this dichotomous key is the best way to determine even the genus of colony A. And this is where we start to go into DNA sequencing and online databases for help to find the closest matches. So after isolating the colony A DNA, PCR was used to amplify the single subunit ribosomal RNA and sent off to sequencing to help determine the closest related, to help determine the sequence. Uh, this is the results of the sequencing. Um, you can see that there are very good peaks here with little interference, which means that we had a, like a very pure culture. Um, there are 525 bases, which is slightly less than what we usually want to have, but it will work. So from this, we took the sequence of 525 bases and blasted it. And after the blast, it compares the known species with matches of the DNA sequence um, I inputted. So here are my results of the colony, A's closest relatives. So we have uh, a lot of, we have 
the genus Aminobacter that is consistent throughout. Um, we have Aminobacter neagatiensis, the Aminobacter amnivorans, the Aminobacter agonesis, and then the Aminobacter ciceroni. Now to the right, it's just the information that the BLAST search gave it, and the one we care about is the percent query, which shows how closely related those exact nucleotide sequences match with each other, and they were all 100%. So what we all, I also want to know is the number of hits, and this is what determined what, I, what specific species I started researching. The one that had the most amount of hits was the Aminobacter amnivorans, um, and so this is where I decided to start looking on information on the internet to see if my characterization techniques matched up. I found that the Aminobacter amnivorans was in the domain bacteria, uh, the kingdom was unspecified, the phylum was proteobacteria, the class was alpha proteobacteria, the order was rhizobials, the family was phylobacteriaceae, the genus was Aminobacter, and the species was Amin Aminoporans. So I also noticed this map that I found online with uh, the Aminobacter known species, and four of them are the ones that showed up on my BLAST search. The rest are unclassified. So after researching, there wasn't really much that I found about the Aminobacter and the Voran species, so I brought in the search to the genus itself to compare. So this table is the comparison between my unknown colony A and then the Aminobacter species, uh, just the genus itself. So for the gram stain, they were both gram negative. For the cell size, the Aminobacter species was 1.3 micrometers. My colony was 1.36 micrometers. The cell shape was Vibrio for both. The oxygen tolerance uh, was a little difficult to find in the Aminobacter uh, genus itself because they were a little different, but for my unknown colony A, it was facultative anaerobe. The growth temperature was 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Um, for my colony, it was 27 degrees Celsius, which is consistent. And then the location were both found in soil. Now, the one difference was the motility, which the Aminobacter species uh, was said to have motility, but the one I uh, observed did not. So this was probably likely due to an experimental error with the hanging drop motility test um, that if I just waited longer to see, we likely would have seen the movement. Um, then there was no info on catalase tests or oxidase tests of the urea, so the capsule. So I just put this in this um, column, so it's all together. Now in conclusion, it's extremely difficult to tell which of the known aminobacter species colony A is, um, just based on the research. Uh, there wasn't that much out there, so that's just kind of how science works sometimes. Um, but the question is the genus pesticide degrading itself, and I did find some information that a couple species did degrade some pesticides, such as nitrotriacetate um, and methyl carbamate insecticides and triazine herbicides. So the next is my citations for all the research information I found about the Aminobacter species, and thank you for your time.